Hi everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome back to My Apple Podcast. For this episode, I want to focus on a utility app made for the iPad called Actions by Useful Apps. Actions is an application that enables you to control your computer from your iPad. The app enables you to set up a number of commands, including hotkeys, system commands, media controls, and so forth. Basically, you can control just about any application on your computer. The app is $3.99 in the App Store. So let's see what Actions looks like in action. Okay, you are currently looking at Actions and I have the Finder application set up at the moment. What I'm gonna do is try to mirror both my desktop as well as the application on the iPad so you can see how the two interface with one another. I'm going to go ahead and take my finger and swipe down from the top and you can see that there are a number of sets arranged coinciding with different applications that I use on a regular basis. Each one has its own set of commands that enable me to initial certain actions very quickly. So you see I have Finder, Chrome, iTunes, Preview, Safari, Mail, Keynote, Text Edit, and Microsoft Word. I'm going to go ahead and start with Finder just so you can get a sense of how this works. Okay, so I have a Finder window open up on my computer and I'm going to use the commands to initiate a few actions. Here you see I have the option to actually open a new window if I want. So I hit the plus simple to open a new window and or I can just hit close window to get rid of it. I can also start a new folder if I like just by clicking on new folder and I'm now prompted to set up a new folder. And as you can see I also have the option to set up smart folders, group in folder and so forth. You also have the option to do quick looks, uh, which again is an icon that you can put on the top of your finder if you want on your computer. But if you want a quicker way to do it, just use actions to do it. So you do a quick look, and here I can look very quickly at a photo that I have in my folder. And you just tap again to get rid of it. You also have the get info. You don't you no longer have to control click anymore. You can just use actions, click get info, and there you have it. Now you can get the info that you need on your item. You click close window once again to get rid of that get rid of that dialog window. You can also duplicate files from here as well by just simply clicking the du duplicate command. And I now have just duplicated a photo there. And I can also, since I don't really need a duplicate right now, I can have the option to actually move it to the trash. There you go, it's in the trash. So as you can see, there are a lot of very easy commands at your disposal when you're using an application with the Actions app made for the iPad. And I'm gonna go ahead and swipe to the bottom here and open up a different application. Let's try iTunes. Now you notice as I opened up iTunes, the iTunes application immediately came to the forefront on my computer. And let's just see what we have that's possible here. I have some albums set up. I'm going to try and find an album where I know I have a series of songs. I'm going to go ahead and open this jazz album I have here by Abdullah Abrahim. And I'm just going to select this first song. And now I have the option to play this song if I want. I can choose to pause it from actions. I can click next to go to the next song on the list and I can start playing that song as well. And I can just go through each song that way. Pretty cool. You can also create a smart list if you want. You can get track information. So I'm going to go ahead and get track information just by tapping on the eye symbol. and. To get rid of it, you can just close the window. Oh, what do you know? The close window option does not work with iTunes. And as you know, if you're on your computer using your keyboard, 
to get rid of this dialog window, you would normally just hit the return key. Well, you know, you can set up a shortcut key using actions for that. This is a perfect example of how you can set up your own command. So let's go ahead and do that. In the top right corner, I'm going to click the edit icon. And then I'm going to click create because I want to add a new command to this application. Okay, a couple things. I don't want it to say new action. I want it to say enter. So I'm going to type in enter as my button. It is going to be a shortcut, but I just want it to be a return key. So I'm going to, right next to the plus symbol, I'm going to hit this button here. And then on my keyboard, I'm just going to select return. And that means that now when I click, click enter, I'll be able to get rid of this dialog box. But I'm not content with just that. Right now you see the icon is black. I want to make it green. So I'm going to click the green palette icon at the bottom. And then I'm going to click modify because I don't want that Thunderbolt icon there. I want a different icon. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to web. You have a, a whole menu of options here in terms of what kind of icon you want to use. I just want to find some kind of arrow icon to represent return. Okay, that seems pretty cool. So now I'm going to hit the check symbol to get out of edit mode. And now with my return enter key set up, I'm going to go ahead and press that to get rid of this dialog window. So that's one way you can customize your own buttons when using actions. Okay, let's go to one more application. I'm going to swipe down and I'm going to go over to one I set up myself, Keynote because I love Keynote for the iPad. And as you can see, the Keynote application comes up on the computer. So you can see from the options that we have available, I can open up a new document if I like. I can insert an object. So I'm gonna click Insert. And you see here, I now have the option to insert an image into my presentation. And I wanna get rid of this window. I don't have a close option. It does not appear. So I'm going to go ahead and set up another command to get rid of this window without having to touch my keyboard. So let's try setting up another command. I'm going to select the edit icon. And I'm going to click create to create a new action again. And for those of you who are not familiar with shortcut keys for getting rid of these kind of dialog windows, it's basically escape. So I just want to set up an escape button here. So I'm going to type into the space here and I'm just going to type escape. And of course, the shortcut is escape. So I'm going to enter that there. Um, let's see here. I, I'm going to leave the Thunderbolt icon there for now, and I'm just going to choose yellow for my icon. This is now my new escape button. I'm going to go ahead and click the arrow button. Click the arrow button again to get back into normal mode. So these are my normal icons for operating Keynote. I don't want it all the way over there, though, so I'm going to press and hold. Okay, wait, I don't want to do that just yet. I want to go back into edit mode because I want to bring this escape button back over to the front. Here we go. All right, now I'm going to hit the check button again to get back in normal operation. And now I'm going to go ahead and just hit the escape button to get rid of this window. See, I just set up another icon for improving my workflows. And there are many other things that you can do here. For example, if I select this photo here, I can now hit the shortcut key mask and I can go in and, and mask this image if I want. I can hit the cut button to cut that out. And what's also cool is you can actually use actions to control your presentations as well. And I know there's a great Keynote remote app available and I use that all the time too. It's fantastic. But with actions, because you can set up so many applications on it, Keynote is just one of the many applications you have at your disposal to control. So let's just say I want to go ahead and just set up my presentation. At the bottom here, you can see I have slides as an option. So I'm going to select slides, and then there's a subset of categories that appears. 
And again, that's what the subsets are and how they can be used is that within any given function, you can set up subsets. So here you can see I have the option to add a new slide or I can just start playing my presentation, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit the play button. And now my presentation is now full screen. I'm going to hit slide again. And now you see I have the option to advance my slides. I can go to the next slide or I can go to the previous slide and or I can just simply quit the application or quit the slide presentation. So actions really comes in handy for just about anything that you want to use. It's a very useful application. I would encourage you to buy it. It's only $3.99. I just showed you a few examples of what you can do. You can imagine what is possible with actions. Well, this is Tim Brown. Thanks again for tuning in to my Apple podcast. Check me out next time.